Hey Rad Pro. So in this video, we're going to be talking about design tokens. So design tokens are a big part of design systems, and it's really all about setting up our variables inside of Figma and making our environments as similar to the dev environment as we can. But first, let's walk through what a design token is. So, so let's say that we've got these UI pieces. We've got we've got a card with a icon and a expiring tag. We've also got an expiring chip. We've got uh, the ability to like drag things into this spot. We've got two different types of buttons and then a third button that is kind of similar to this primary, but it's got a different icon and treatment and all that. And all of this is using the brand blue color, right? But let's say that down the line, we want to add a new color, which is this warning orange, which will affect all the expiring tags and the expiring chips. Now, the difficulty is going back here. When, when we told our developers initially, hey, we're gonna use the same color blue across all of our you know, UI. Well, once we have a new color, enter a new color into the system, the developers are gonna have to go to each instance where that brand blue was used and find the ones that are different. So like, you know, for this instance, we've got the expiring chip. They would have to go to every expiring chip that used blue and swap that blue for the orange. Same with the tags and the icons here. And it's a really difficult thing that doesn't sound too bad, but it really does add up to dev time. And that's the whole point of design systems is to avoid dev time. This is even more compounded when we start to add even more colors and different types of treatments. Like really this drag should be treated a little bit differently, different color than this brand blue, even though it's like a similar color, it's just a different shade of that blue. So these are basically color tokens. So tokens can be anything. It doesn't need to just be colors. It could be numbers that are used for spacing. It could be text variable stuff. It could also be images as well. And these tokens are gonna to be reused across different places throughout your design system. So to avoid these issues where we've got injecting of new colors that affect the development process, and also for our own sake, you know, being able to drag or, or grab the right color blue or right shade of blue across our design system while we're working in those and applying those variables to our designs, the easiest way to do this is to set a new layer between the original global token, which is this orange and this blue, and add a new section in the middle, which will have an actual name to it. So these are called semantic tokens. So whereas we've got these that are either global or primitive tokens, these are kind of like the base foundation. So, you know, like orange 100. And then we assign that through an alias in Figma and that can be named to a different token. So, we, so we've actually got two tokens using the same color here. So we've got this brand blue that is assigned to the elements landing, the button primary, and the secondary button as well. But say that down the line, we want to change this secondary button to the orange. Well, it's a simple switch where instead of referencing the blue, we're now referencing the orange. Maybe down the line, we also want to add a whole new color as well, like this gray. And that gray can also be associated to, you know, expiring buttons now as well. Maybe we don't want like this chip to be a warning. We want it to be an interactive element that doesn't feel like a warning, but you know, ha should have its own treatment separate from the primary and the secondary buttons. So this is the beauty of tokens and also layering your tokens through semantic logic like primitives and then semantic tokens that is associated that are aliased to those primary like global tokens so let's get out of the theory and actually go design something and use this system like over here on this design that we used in the atomic design breakdown so first let's go create our token so here i've got some shades of blue I've got some shades of orange and some shades of black or gray. So go ahead and deselect everything and go to our local variables. And I'm just going to make this really big as we add our variables. So I've created a new collection called design tokens, and I'm going to create a variable that is a color. So this color should be 
blue 100. And I'm going to color pick this here. Now you can press shift enter to get a new blue one, uh, blue token. But you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and change how this gets going. So instead of blue dash 100, I'm going to put a blue slash 100. And did you see what just happened? It automatically created a new folder over here inside of our tokens. Let's go ahead and create some orange 100 and orange 80. So you see now we've got these two groups that can be, you know, kind of interchanged throughout. We could also create subgroups as well, which all of that's going to be super important as we play out this system here. So I'm going to just go ahead and create all of these shades. So we've got 80, 60, shift enter, 40, shift enter, 20, shift enter, 10, 1. Okay, so now I want to create my black variables. So I'm going to call this uh, gray slash 100. And that automatically put it inside of the orange, you see. So I'm going to just drag this and move it out so that it's no longer a subgroup of the orange. Okay, so we now have our primitive color variables. And these are our primitive tokens. So that's basically the equivalent of this token right here, where it's the blue and it's a brand blue and it's now connected directly to the buttons. So we could go in here and let's grab this chip for instance, and we'll go ahead and press this four dots and go here. So perfect. We've just swapped in our primitive token to 100. But again, let's say that down the line, we want to switch to orange, right? Now we can do that, but it's going to definitely mess with the development standpoint. And also too, you know, that when you're working inside of a large scale product, it might be hard to remember whether you should use, you know, orange 100, orange 80, or orange 60, right? There's different times where you want to use those different spots and they should all be standardized across your whole product where once you use chips that are at 80, all chips should be at 80, right? And so using, so using that logic, we don't want to be thinking, wait, is that 80 or 100 or was it 60? I can't remember. Well, the best way to do that for yourself is to create those semantic tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and group all of these into the into a new group called primitives. So I'm double clicking and pressing primitive typing in primitives dash and it's automatically creating that subgroup of all of those primitives. So I'm going to create a new variable that is a color and we're going to call this let's call it button Buttons, chip, primary, chip, active. Now I could go color pick this 100, but it's not actually associated with the, the variable primitive over here, right? So what we do instead is instead of clicking here to choose a color, we can right click right here and go to create alias. And we're going to select the primitive from over on the blue. I'm going to create a deactive V or not selected. And this primitive, and this is going to be associated with the gray. And let's make it this 10. Okay. So now we're over here. So you do need to, as you, as you update this, you do need to change the connection, right? Because currently we're still associated directly to the primitive, but we want to be associated with the actual semantic tokens, which is this buttons. And then I'll grab here and I'll grab this button as well. Perfect. And actually, you know what? That's a little bit darker than my design. So I think I associated it with the wrong one. So I'm just going to switch this from this 10 to this one and look at that. So we're now 
switched that primitive perfectly fine. We can go back over here and if we wanna really refine that, we could still change this. And as we're changing the primitive, we're also changing the actual semantic token as well, which is then associated to this button. So you see how all that, all that connects? It's really close together. And this is the beauty of design systems is creating these primitive tokens that go into semantic tokens, which you can then reference much, much easier. So now when I go over here, instead of like looking for the exact color, like, oh yeah, that was a one. No, I just go search for chips, not selected. Chips, not selected. Now over here, I've got a gradient set up and I could probably drop this gradient. It's probably not needed, but let's just say that we do want it to look exactly like this, right? So I'm gonna duplicate this out so that we can like really kind of color pick everything and what I want to do is move this linear gradient to 100%. And re this is actually a new feature, relatively new in Figma, which allows you to pull, instead of setting a color uh, that is manually set on a gradient, you're going to be able to associate that with a token. So all you have to do is instead of grabbing from here, head over to your libraries. Now we go in here and we're going to grab Probably we'll go with a blue. No, that's too bright. Blue, blue eighty maybe. Let's tr let's try how that feels. No, that's probably too. Yeah, there you go. That looks great. Let's see it compared to the original design. Oh yeah, that's almost spot on. Perfect. So the only trouble though, is we've now set our, we've set those to the primitives themselves, which, you know, when we're creating a gradient, it is kind of a difficult thing where uh, you, you might not want to actually set semantic variables for your gradients because, uh, you know, how often are you gonna be using those gradients? But here, if this is a featured card that's gonna be happening regularly, maybe we even want that to be the same deal on the buttons as well. Well, unfortunately we can't save this gradient, like the gradient itself as a token. So we're gonna to need to set up some semantic tokens for the top left and the bottom right of this gradient so that we can really quickly pull it later on instead of searching for 60 and be like, wait, no, that's too bright or 80, oh, we know that's too dark. So being able to just say top left primary gradient, right? That's what we wanna be looking for in our design system. So let's go create that semantic token. So we'll go in here. This should actually be in another group called semantics. Gradients. Primary top. I'm gonna move the buttons inside of the semantics as well. I'm gonna move this up to above this, the primitives that way when we're color picking or trying to assign our colors over here, they're gonna be shown up here rather than going down and searching for them lower in this scroller. So that's why it's valuable to definitely move stuff up as far as you can to make it easier to find. So we've got our gradients and we've got primary top. So I'm gonna create an alias by right clicking and grabbing that. And we're gonna grab the primitive blue 100 and then press shift enter. Well, actually, no, the top is going to be the 60 and the bottom, primary bottom is 100. So I'm gonna press shift enter and I'm gonna do secondary top and that will be the orange, right? Because this orange right here is, is looking good as well, bottom. Switch that to 100, perfect. So now let's go grab this card and see, see how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna move this linear gradient to 100% and I'm going to grab this, go to my libraries, go to secondary top and secondary bottom. Drop the linear gradient behind, or the fill behind it. And just like that, we've got a gradient that is based on the variable tokens that we've just set up. Now you could take this a step further and go and 
put in the variable assignments and assign those tokens throughout the whole design. And I think that would be an awesome exercise for you to go do. You know, even changing these fixed whites, changing them to, you know, primitive one, or the primitive blue one. But then primitive blue one, we don't want that, right? We want card fill, right? So then we should probably set up a new set uh, in here. We're gonna create a new color and we'll call this elements, cards, fill. Okay, and that card fill is going to be blue one, huh? blue one. And then maybe the text is going to be gray 100. So now you're able to grab all of this text inside, assign the semantic tokens. And actually this is a shade. So let's go bump that up to 100% opacity and do subheads. We'll change that to probably like a 60. Let's see. No, probably even less. Maybe like a 40. Yeah, that's perfect. Change the text as well. Cool, so now we're getting somewhere. All of these, we swap that to the card fill. Change all these from the black to instead going to the card fill black. And that's another thing too, is if you've got enough content outside of the cards themselves, and this like, uh, you know, you're gonna be sitting here with a lot of text like this, right? Uh, if you do have something like that, you may want to set up a semantic uh, grouping outside of your card fills. Uh, so that way, instead of elements slash cards, it's elements slash, you know, global page or something like that. Maybe just page, right? It really depends on how much content you have that needs those semantic assignments, right? But for here, since there's not too many, right? There's just kind of like headers or titles on those. Uh, maybe we don't actually have this called cards. Maybe we just call this uh, content, right? So then we can call... That we can swap this fill to card fill or card BG. And then we've got headers for this text. And as I change this, by the way, it's always going to be getting updated over here too. So when we go want to search for, you know, subheads, you can just search and it would show up subheads. So if you ever want to make that change across these, you know, subheads, since this is a header, we're creating that pattern for ourselves that we're using both on the main page, right? Header, subhead, and then we've got subhead uh, right here, but then inside the card, we've got a header and a subhead as well. So I think that'd be awesome for you to do at this point. If you've been following along, I think it'd be great for you to go, you know, color pick, create a few uh, a, more semantic variables and semantic tokens for the, you know, these tags here. And, you know, maybe get into, I'll, I'll copy in some of these other pages for you. Go grab those and put them into your, this design token system as well over here. Uh, you know, assign all these variables with, with new semantic tokens, create those for yourselves and try to like make it very manageable and, and easy to pull later. That's the real key is finding stuff that's really easy to pull. But I hope you got something out of this. I think this is a really important topic that you know design systems is really built upon like shared language across all of your designs. And, more, and even more importantly than that, making it where your design environment is as close to the development environment as possible. Because that's what's gonna make it where that design system is super easy to work with and easy to build new stuff inside that system. Anyways, have an awesome day and see you on the next video.